What's good, Redemption Kids? I am Dizzy. Just kidding. My name is Pastor Robin. This is my good friend, Planty. You know what it is. We have an amazing story today about bread literally falling from the sky. There's some questions for you to uh, discuss through after the lesson with the parent, with the sibling, whoever it is, to help you understand even more. But I've got a cool activity for us to do, right? First, you need your brain. Just kidding. You need a pencil uh, for today's activity. And then I want you to find a Ziploc bag and fill it with water. Kind of like this. This is Planty's favorite drink of all time. Water, right? So find a Ziploc bag, ask for help if you need it, um, and fill it with half a half full of water. And once you do that, uh, find a pencil and sharpen it as well. Ask a, a parent for help. And then what do you think will happen if we took the bag full of water and poked it? Do you think it will leak? Let's find out. Ready? Let's start our lesson. I'll show you this water bag demonstration and I want you to do it uh, with your parents or with your sibling, the same thing that I'm doing and see if you could um, create the same result, right? Uh, about half full of water and then you want to seal the bag really tight. What do you think is going to happen if I just go through here? Any guesses? Will it leak? Planty says it will leak because he loves water and so he's hoping for it. You ready? Ready to try? I wonder if... Mm, no. Okay, this time I'm actually gonna do it. You ready? Three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Okay, for real, I'm gonna do it, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is the, this is for real, I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Three, two, one, zero. Look at this, no water coming out at all. Do you see this? This is magic. This is magic. It's really not magic, it's science. Are you able to do this at home, you think? See, the water didn't escape. There is a way for it to block the, the water coming out. Stay tuned for why I did this in today's lesson of how God provided for the physical needs of his people. If you were going on a long trip, what kind of container might you use to carry water? Well, maybe you can use a plastic bag to carry your water. See, when God's people escaped from Egypt, they traveled for many, many, many days, but couldn't carry a lot of water with them. As we'll see in today's Bible story, it wasn't long before they got thirsty and hungry. How did they get water? Listen closely to our Bible story to find out. I'm going to give this water to Planty now. Be right back. Question, how many of you read the Bible before? That's great. One of the reasons I started reading the Bible is because I had questions about God. I wanted to know more about who God is and, and what he's like. 
all of the Bible stories we will hear have something to do with our big picture question. And this question helps us to see the bigger picture of what God is up to. And as you listen to the Bible story, I want to share with you today, think about this question. What is God like? What is God like? We'll talk about the answer after the story. Well, if you've ever spent time reading the Bible, you probably know that the Bible is made up of uh, different stories, right? All the stories in the Bible fit together to tell us one big story. The story of creation of Adam and Eve, and the story of, of um, our, our last week when we talked about Jesus, and his claim of being the son of God, and everything in between, and everything after, all the stories in the Bible fit together to tell us one big story. And the Bible tells us the story of how God rescues sinners through his son, Jesus. And the Bible starts at the beginning, literally, the beginning of time when God created everything. It tells us how sin entered the world through Adam and Eve. And how God began working out his plans to send a rescuer. He chose a, a group of people, the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to be his people through whom the rescuer would come. And the Old Testament tells us about these people, the nation of Israel. God called Moses to deliver his people from captivity in Egypt. And so guess what? Moses did. The people left Egypt and miraculously escaped from Pharaoh and his army by crossing the Red Sea. Well, that's where our story picks up today. In the wilderness, where God's people were traveling towards the promised land, the land God promised to give them. Open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15, and we'll be in chapter 15 through 17. Exodus chapter 15 through 17. If you got a kid's Bible, this is the perfect time to grab your kid's Bible with you and open it up. I want you to open it up with me and follow along. Just open it up and I will read it to you. Exodus chapter 15 through 17. Bread from heaven. And this is our big idea for today's lesson. It's that God provided for the physical needs of his people. God provided for his, for the physical needs of his people. Here's the story of Exodus chapter 15 through 17. Well, now Moses led God's people away from the Red Sea and they came to the wilderness. They could not find good water to drink. And so they complained to Moses. God said, if you obey me and do what is right and keep my commandments, I will not punish you like I punished the Egyptians. I am the Lord who heals you. The Israelites came to a place called Elam where they found plenty of food and water, and they camped there. The Israelites left Elam and journeyed into the wilderness. They were hungry. 
they complained to Moses, we wish we had died in Egypt. They were being a little bit dramatic there, don't right? At least there was food to eat there. Now we're just in wilderness, kind of lost, just wandering around the people complain to God. They said, you brought us out here to starve to death? Still being dramatic. But Moses had not brought them out there to die. God knew what he was doing. God said, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will eat bread until you are full. Have you ever had that full feeling that, you know, you can't walk anymore, you just wanted to take a nap? I have that plenty of times. God said, Then you will see and know that I am the Lord. So, at evening, quail came into the camp. In the morning, fine flakes like frost were on the ground. Hmm. What is it? The Israelites asked. Moses said, It is bread from heaven, from the Lord that he has given to you to eat. The Israelites called this bread manna, which means, what is it? God gave the people instructions. He told them to collect just enough to eat for the day. Right? If you were going on a trip, just a one-day trip, and your parents asked, hey, pack your favorite snacks, pay, pack your favorite meals, you would just bring enough for one day, right? And so God told them to collect just one day enough to eat. If they collected too much, the leftovers... They went bad. God told them to collect twice as much on the sixth day because on the seventh day was the Sabbath, a day to rest. Well, guess what? The Israelites did not always follow God's instructions, did they? Sometimes they collected too much manna and sometimes they tried to collect manna on the Sabbath day. Remember, they were only supposed to collect the exact amount of food only they needed for that day. And on the sixth day, they were supposed to collect twice and not do anything on the Sabbath. But instead of trusting God, they try to plan it their own way. Well, they disobeyed God, right? God gave instructions to the Israelites and they didn't follow. Well, Moses, he was pretty upset. He was angry that the people refused to obey God. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years. Can you imagine that eating the same meal over and over and over and over and over and over and uh, I got stuck there. 40 years in the wilderness. That's a long time. The Israelites moved about the wilderness as the Lord told them to do so. And one day they came to a camp with no water. Give us something to drink, they told Moses. Why are you complaining to me, Moses said. You brought us out here to die, the Israelites said. They forgot that the Lord had a plan for them. 
Lord, what should I do? Moses cried out. God showed Moses a rock. A rock and instructed him to hit it with his staff. And guess what? Water came out of it. Water came out of the rock and the people drank. It was still a sign that the Lord was with them. Bread from heaven? Quail from nowhere? Water from a rock? What an incredible story, right? Plenty agrees. God's people had just escaped from Egypt in a mass exodus. When many people leave a place at the same time, that's what an exodus is. And one of the first things they did was starting to complain. They just left on the trip that God had planned, that God had rescued. And their first response was to complain. I mean, I probably would have done the same. We kind of complain when we get hungry, don't we? It's hard to go very long without food, without water. For me, it's hard to go without coffee, especially if you're doing a lot of walking. The people thought Moses brought them out into the wilderness to die. Of course, we can see the bigger picture of what is happening because we have the whole Bible to read, right? We know that God had a plan. And remember our big idea? God provided for the physical needs of his people. God provided for the physical needs of his people. How did he do that? By sending quail and manna. He also provided water to drink. God heard the complaints of his people. And he cared about them. He didn't ignore them. God provided these things to them. And the story really helps us answer our big picture question. Our big picture question is, what is God like? What is God like? I agree. Well, this is the answer. I want you to really understand and even memorize this. God is holy, good, and loving. Right? What is God like? Three things. God is holy, good, and loving. I want you to say with me. God is holy, good, loving. There is no one like God, right? He cares for us and always does what is right. Well, in the New Testament... Jesus said that he is the bread of life. That's found in John chapter 6. God provided manna from heaven for his people's physical hunger. And later he provided his son, Jesus, for our spiritual hunger. The Israelites needed bread to live for a little while, but whoever has Jesus will live forever. Right? Jesus is the bread of life. Of life! Jesus allows to live forever. Forever? Forever, ever? Yes. Jesus is our bread of life. 
there's a video on our page that I want you to watch. Think about whether it is wrong to uh, complain if your parents make a decision that you don't like. Check out the questions from kids video on our page and think about uh, the questions uh, that the kids asked and how the pastor answers. Our key passage for this unit uh, is found in Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 through 39. Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 to 39. This is what the word says. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Think about today's Bible story. If you were in the wilderness and, and someone provided what you needed to live, would you ignore him or speak badly of him? No way, right? See, when we believe the good news that Jesus died to rescue sinners, our reaction should be love. These verses are Jesus' words. Let's work together to, to memorize this key passage over the next couple of weeks, okay? Can we do that? Our Bible story today shows us what God is like. What is God like? God is holy, good, and loving. Right, can we say that one more time? God is holy, good, and loving. He provided bread for his people in the wilderness. And God provided for us by sending Jesus to be our Savior. God satisfi satisfies our deepest longings by giving us himself. There's some activities that hopefully you received by now in the mail. Uh, there's some additional videos for you to watch, some cool animation cartoon videos about uh, today's uh, story, today's lesson from the Bible. Check out those uh, questions from kids video, uh, very interesting as well. And uh, there's some activities for you to do as well each week as we continue uh, to understand how God led his people to the promised land. But before we close and before you start working on those things, can we close our time together to pray? Is that okay? All right, let's 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 close our eyes and uh, bow our heads and, and pray and thank Jesus for who he is. Lord God, we thank you that you are holy and loving and good. We thank you, God, that you provide for us the, the meals that we need, uh, the water that we need, some of us the coffee that we need to drink every morning. Amen. But God, thank you, God, that you are with us and you provide for our physical needs and our spiritual needs. We thank you for Jesus and sending him to us to save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, guys. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, I'll be back next week. Join me next week as we continue to uh, go towards the promised land and see how God is good and loving and holy. We love you guys and see you guys next week.